In this video, we're going to be discussing a non-destructive inspection method known as dye penetrant inspection. Now this testing method can be used to identify surface defects and cracks in a given component or material. It's important to note that this can only be used to identify defects on the surface of the component. So there's a four step process that we need to go through in order to carry out the test. And the first thing that we need to do is pre-clean the surface. Now the reason for this is to remove any debris or grease or detergents that may be on the surface of the component. And any one of those things may well impact on the results of the test. So we clean the component. Once we've cleaned the component, we apply the dye. And normally the dye is applied as a spray or a liquid. Now there's various different dyes that are available. Some of them are coloured and can be seen by the naked eye, whereas others are fluorescent and require UV light in order to interpret the results. But let's assume for the purpose of this example that we're using a coloured dye, and we spray that coloured dye onto the surface of the material. And in doing so, some of that dye is going to penetrate into any cracks or surface defects. The other thing that's important to point out at this stage is that without applying this dye, these cracks or surface defects wouldn't be visible to the naked eye. We're talking very fine cracks here. So once we've applied the dye, we need to give it time to seep into the cracks and into the defects, and the time is called the dwell time. Now there'll be different standards and different codes for different industries and different components, so that dwell time will be specified in the procedures for the test. After the dwell time, we need to wipe the surface. And recall that although the dye will have seeped into the cracks, there will still be some residue on the surface. And when we wipe the surface, we use a dry wet dry method. First of all, a dry cloth is used to remove any surplus. Then a wet cloth is used, again to remove any surplus that's still on the surface. And finally, a dry cloth is used. It's important not to over wipe the surface because what we don't want to do is draw the dye back out of the cracks. So once we've applied the dye and we've wiped the surface, we can then spray the developer onto the surface. And the developer has a very special role. What it's going to do is draw the penetrant out of the cracks. So in effect, it's going to make it more visible because it's going to increase the size of what can visually be seen. Now once all of that has been done, a certified and trained engineer would need to interpret the results. And what they would be looking for is relevant and non-relevant indications. Now this will normally be specified by the size of the crack or the size of what's visible. So some cracks and defects can be discarded as being non-relevant based on their size, and others would be considered relevant and require further investigation. All of the details as to what determines a relevant and non-relevant indication would be laid out in the standards or codes for given sectors. Now an example of where dye penetrant inspection can be used is to inspect welds. And what we'd be looking for is things such as fatigue cracks in the welds. So the test would be carried out, the certified engineer would interpret the results, and they would be looking for relevant indications based on the size of cracks or size of visible defects once the test had been carried out. They would then need to further interpret those results in order to determine the potential causes of the cracks or the defects. And finally, they would have to make a decision as to either accept the part, reject the part, or repair the part. So to summarise, dye penetrant inspection can be used to identify surface cracks on a range of different materials, and it's particularly used to identify defects in welds and weld lines. 